How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the Air Team channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the entire 737 Next Generation family in 1 to 1 scale. So as you may be aware, over a year ago now, Jordan actually did a tutorial on the 1 to 1738 on his channel. But in the time since then, quite a lot has changed in the design here. In addition, of course, is the fact that this video will now be covering the entire family instead of just one aircraft. So as for the aircraft itself, alongside the Airbus A320 family, the 737NG series is one of the most popular aircraft families in the world today. It comprises of four, technically five aircraft here. The 737-600, the shortest of the family. It barely sees operation in the modern era, but it's still a member of the series, so it's included here. The next three here are the more prominent members of the family. The 737-700 is the shorter variant with the longer 737-800 here being kind of viewed as the standard 737. Finally, here we have the longest of the family, the stretch 737-900, and here's where I was referring to the five aircraft of the family. So this is the 737-900ER here. It has a fifth exit door here behind the wings. The somewhat rare 737-900 does not have this extra door, so that's the defining feature between the 900 and 900ER. Now, in addition to showing you how to build all five aircraft, I'm also going to be trying out something a little bit new here. So, I was too lazy to set up any fancy displays for this for the tutorial, but if I head over to the aircraft line here, I have also put together flaps configurations for the 737. So we've got the leading edge slats deployed on the front here. This first variant has takeoff flaps, which is flaps 5 on the 737. And the second one up here is configured with landing flaps, which is the standard of flaps 30. In addition to this, we also have the ground spoilers deployed, and kind of the best hint we can get at thrust reverses in this tiny scale. So at the very end of this tutorial, after we are finished with the aircraft, I will be showing you how to add on all of these different configurations if you so choose, whether you'd like it for the added realism in an airport project or something, or just for display value. I don't know, it's there if you want. Anyways, with that kind of abnormally long preface out of the way, I can get back to the tutorial. So, now I have to resume with all of my other usual important spiels. So, first off, as I've mentioned multiple times already, this build is in 1 to 1 scale, meaning that every meter in real life is equivalent to one block exactly. So if you are looking to build an airport project or something in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1 to 1 aircraft on the channel. Now, as always, this build does make use of our very own custom Aerotain texture pack. A download link to version 1 of this pack can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, as per my last few tutorials, I'm personally using our Work in Progress version 2 here. At the time of recording, this is unreleased, and we don't really have an ETA at all at the moment. For the purposes of this tutorial, though, everything should be fine. We're not using any new tricks with our texture pack here, it's just that the textures might be slightly different for you. But in all functionality, it should be the same. Now, if you're stuck using the default pack, if you're following along on console or something, I will do my best to show you how to go about building this in default. But please do keep in mind that I highly recommend using the Air Team Pack instead if you can, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on the tutorial. So, first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. Now, since we are looking at dimensions for four different aircraft here, I'm not going to have these up on screen as I usually do. But if you need to look at these in a text format still, you can find this in the description below as well. So as for the length here, the 737-600 is 31 blocks long. The 737-700 is 33 blocks long, the 800 is 40 blocks long, and the 900 or 900ER are both 42 blocks long. In terms of wingspan, what you're looking at is 33 blocks across with winglets, or 29 blocks across without winglets. And how that will apply is the 600 model here will never appear with winglets. It's an older aircraft, it was never retrofitted with the wingtip additions. So it will always be 29 blocks across here. Now as for the rest of the NG family, the 700 through the 900, it's worth mentioning that there are a select few aircraft, like only a handful, from the original production line whose wingtip structures didn't allow for the addition of winglets afterwards. However, that is incredibly rare. So for the 700, 800, and 900 models, you are more than likely looking at a wingspan of 33 blocks across. With that mess out of the way, there's only one last dimension to worry about, and that is the height of 13 blocks. So just keep that all in mind. Again, I know that was a bit much, so you can find that in the description as well if you need to have a closer look to cross-reference with the model you're building. But yeah, that's about it for dimensions. So just keep that in mind as you're getting started. Now as for materials, here in the Air Team Pack we're using the wool block, coupled with the purple stairs and slabs for the smooth and shiny wool coloration for the aircraft. In default, you'll probably want to use something like quartz as an alternative, so just use that instead of wool as I'm building. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again, that's the purple material in the Aero Team Pack. So just keep that in mind. 
Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on the 737. So, how this is going to work, in order to tackle all four aircraft in a single video, I'm going to be first building the common nose shared between all the aircraft. Afterwards, I'm going to be breaking off into segments and building the fuselage sections for each aircraft individually, before regrouping and building the tail cone, stabilizers, and wings, and all the rest at the end. We don't have to worry about all that quite yet, though. All I ask is that you choose which aircraft you're going to be building beforehand, but it's just important to know that I'll be tackling this section by section instead of layer by layer, as you may be used to. So to get the nose started here, if you are building this on the ground as I'm here, you'll be wanting to start the nose two blocks above the ground, like this. So this will start in line with the second block, with a one block gap in between the ground and the bottom of the nose. If you're building the aircraft in flight, though, you obviously don't have to worry about that but just keep that in mind if you are building this landed on the ground. So for the nose here, we're going to be starting with a birch trapdoor going back right here. In the Aeroteam pack, this is a wool texture. In default, just to use an iron trapdoor. Now we can get rid of those spacer blocks that I placed down for the ground separation. Going back from this birch trapdoor now, we'll have a wool top slab with two quartz top slabs going back from this for the nose gear doors. Now if you're in default and already building the aircraft out of quartz, in order to accent these doors from the aircraft, you could probably use something like uh, cobblestone instead for the doors here, or maybe uh, polished diorite slabs uh, like this. But it's a bit of a weird off-white texture, so using quartz here in the Aeroteam pack is a much preferable alternative as it's much more subtle. So this is what we choose to use instead, as it's more accurate to the real aircraft. Anyways, with that all out of the way, we can continue on the nose. So back from these quartz top slabs here, we'll have two wool top slabs going back. Now out to the side right here, we're going to come up a block layer, and out to the sides here we have a quartz full block. Then two more on top, just like this, so it's a three uh, high row, like so. And this will go on both sides. This is for the uh, left and right and forward doors here. Out to the sides of the second block up here, we're going to have a stone button, just like this. Going forwards from this bottom block now, we have four blocks of wool going forwards. So, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Then come in towards the center here, and on top of this birch trap door here, we have a single block of wool, like so. Now, out to the side of this third block forward of the wool right here, so the second one back, this, this one basically, we're going to have a stone button out to the side, like this for the pitot tubes of the 737. Now on top of that block as well right here, on top of that second wool block, we have a wool half slab. Same thing on the other side. Then come forwards and we have a wool half slab there as well. Back from both of these outer half slabs, we'll have a wool stair facing forwards like so, with a block behind to join in with the forward doors there. On top of that block, we'll have a second one, just like this. Join that up in the center with a third block, or fourth technically going forwards, just like this to give you this kind of angle shape. And forwards from all three of these wool blocks exposed now we'll have a wool half slab just like this. And lastly to cap off the top here we're just going to come in between these four doors here with a single wool slab, like so. This will give us the full shape of the nose here. Now to fill in this kind of glaring gap where the cockpit is, what we're going to do is drop a block of wool right there in that gap between these two wool slabs. Then take a cobblestone stair and place that between the two wool stairs facing forwards like so for the back of the flight deck. And for the floor in there we're just going to grab a light grey carpet and drop that on top of the wool block like so. And this is going to give us the nose of the 737. Now that we have the common nose out of the way, here's where things are going to start splitting off to cover all four fuselage sections individually. I'm going to be building the 600, 700, 800 and 900 slash 900 ER fuselage sections separately in order. You can find timestamps to each one of those in the description below, so you can skip ahead to whichever you need for the aircraft you're building. Anyways, with that, I'll see you with the fuselage. Alright, so for the fuselage of the 737-600, going back from this wool top slab down here, we're going to have two more wool top slabs. Next we have a quartz stair upside down facing forwards like this for an airfoil extension on the underside. Now to start off the wing box, we'll have six top slabs going back with your wool. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And box this off to either side, so we have a three by three box like this. Or three by six, rather. Going back now, we'll have a single wool top slab in the middle, with a nether brick top slab out to either side for the exposed wheels on the underside. Next, two wool top slabs going back, and box this off to either side. Then a upside-down quartz stair facing forwards, like this, in the center. 
with a wolf hop sled out to either side, then a single wolf hop sled behind. So it should give you a shape looking like this. Now going back here from the forward doors, the bottom block right here, we're going to have seven blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Quartz full block behind that right there to start off the single overwing exit. Same thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven with a quartz full block there. Then seven more blocks going back from both of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Blocks us off here, or connect rather, in the center there to cover up that gap from the bottom. That's going back here to start off the windows. We're going to start with five uh, wool stairs facing backwards, like this. One, two, three, four, and five. And one, two, three, four, and five. Now we have a space between the windows right here, so we'll have a block of wool there. Then a wool stair facing forwards, like this. Back from that there, we'll have a quartz stair facing forwards to finish off the overwing exits. And then just seven wool stairs facing forwards going back like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now on top here, to cap off the top of the fuselage, what we're going to have here is uh, 15 blocks going back on top of all of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Like so. Then from this wool half slab at the top of the nose here, seven wool slabs going back. Uh, in addition to this one, that is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then a tort stair facing forwards for an uh, airfoil extension on the top right there. Then five wool slabs going back. One, two, three, four, five. Then a torch stair facing backwards for another fin on the top here. And a single wool half slab going back. That'll finish off the top here. Now the very last thing we're going to do to finish off the fuselage here is grab a torch. And come down to the wing box right here. Where we have this, uh, where it comes out to three wide right here for the wing box. A block forwards from this and up a layer right here. From this wool block here above that airfoil extension on the underside. We're going to have a torch out to the side right here for the wing lights. Same thing on the other side here. So there's that first top slab, block forwards, block up, and a torch out to the side. Like so. So that is everything for the fuselage of the 737-600. If you are building just the 600 variant, the next thing you'll want to do is skip ahead to the tail cone section to continue on and finish off this aircraft. You'll find a timestamp to that in the description below, and I'll see you with that. Alright, so for the fuselage of the 737-700, we're going to be starting from this wool top slab right here at the bottom of the nose. Going back right here, we'll have a single wool top slab there, with an upside down port stair facing forwards for an airflow extension on the underside. Next we'll have eight wool top slabs going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now coming out to the side here, we're going to bring the six more towards the front. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This should leave you with two exposed right here. Same thing on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, and six. That'll start off the wing box here at the front. Next going back, we'll have a single wool top slab in the center there with a netherbrick top slab out to either side for the uh, exposed wheels on the underbelly. Then two more wool top slabs going back and boxes off to either side like so. With an upside down quartz stair facing forwards. Wool top slab out to either side and then a single wool top slab behind that fin there. Next for the next layer up here, going back from these forward doors, we'll have seven blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With a quartz full block behind both of those to start off the single overwing exit. Going back now, we have nine blocks of wool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And join these last two up there to cover up that gap on the underside. Next, for the windows here, going back from the forward doors, we have uh, four wool stairs facing backwards. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Just like this. Next, we have a gap in the windows here. So for this, we'll have a full block of wool right there. And then two more quartz stairs, or wool stairs rather, facing forwards going back, just like this. So this will leave you with four windows here, a space, and then two more windows. Now going back to finish off the overwing exits here, we have a quartz stair facing forwards, like so. And then just nine wool stairs facing forwards to finish off the rest of the windows, just like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Like so. Now going up here to cap off the top of the fuselage, we'll have 17 blocks of wool on top of all of the windows here. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Now for the top here, we'll have eight half slabs going back from this slab right there on the nose, in addition to that slab that is. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Port stair facing backwards for a fin on the top. Three half slabs going back with your wool. And now we'll be putting in the SATCOM antenna. So for this, what we're going to do is grab snow layers, place down two blocks underneath there, between those two and the previous layer, basically, to put snow on. And on top of this first one right here, we're going to have six snow layers. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then just five snow layers here. One, two, three, four, and five. This will give you the rounded bump on top for the SATCOM antenna. Now, it's important to note that not all operators of the 737 will have the SATCOM antenna installed. So if you are building this for a specific aircraft, um, or if you don't want to include it or whatever, uh, what you'll be using instead here is just two half slabs across to, you know, just replace that SATCOM antenna with nothing. But if you are including the SATCOM antenna again here, that's six snow layers, and five, one, two, three, four, and five, like so. So you'll probably want to cross-check with images of the actual aircraft you're building to see if that operator has the SATCOM antenna installed. Anyways, once we have that, we just have a single half slab going back from the SATCOM there, and a quartz stair facing backwards, and a single wool slab there to finish off the back. That's the last thing we'll be doing here for the fuselage of the 737-700, is grabbing a torch. Coming down here to where we have these uh, wool slabs here, the, where they come out to row 3 in the wing box. From this very first top slab right there, we'll come a block forwards and a block up. Out to either side of this block here, we have a torch to the side, just like this. Block forwards, block up, and just like that. That's for the wing light on the side there. Anyways, once we have that, that is everything for the fuselage of the 737-700. So if you are just building the 700 variant here, what you'll want to do next is skip ahead to the tail cone so you can continue on and finish off this aircraft. You'll find a timestamp for that in the description below. But uh, yeah, I'll see you with that. Alright, so for the fuselage of the 737-800 here, back from this wool top slab at the bottom of the nose here, we're going to have two more wool top slabs going back with an upside down towards stair facing backwards going back right here for a, a uh, airflow extension on the underside. Then three more wool top slabs going back, one, two, and three. This time an upside down towards stair facing forwards for a second fin there. Next we're going to have six wool top slabs going back, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And box this off to either side so you have a three by six box here for the wing box. Going back now, single wool top slab there in the center, with a nether brick top slab off to either side for the exposed wheels on the underside. Then two wool top slabs going back from the center there, box this off again, like this. Course upside down stair facing forwards now for a fin on the underside of the back of the wing box. Wool top slab out to either side and a single wool top slab back from the... actually, my bad, not a single one. We have five wool top slabs going back from this... Uh, upside down port stair there. So one, two, three, four, and five, just like this. Next coming up here, what we're going to have is seven blocks going back from this uh, uh, port block at the bottom of the forward doors here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now out to either side here, we're going to have a torch just like this for the wing light on the side. Same thing here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and a torch there for the wing light. Then just four more blocks going back. One, two, three, and four. Same thing on the other side there. Next we're going to have two uh, full blocks of quartz going back here for the uh, two overwing exits. So, two blocks there, and two blocks there. Going back now we have eleven blocks. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Then close off these last two right there to close off that gap from the underside. Going back right here, we're going to be putting in the windows. So this is going to be a little bit different. The windows of the 800 actually have a little bit of asymmetry to them. So the window spacing on the left side is not the same as it is on the right side. So starting on the left side only here, we're going to have a wool full block. And then six wool stairs facing forwards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then a wool stair facing backwards, full block of wool there, 
and then two uh, wool stairs facing forwards like this. On the right side here, we're going to be starting with wool stairs facing backwards with eight stairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We'll full block there, and then two wool stairs facing forwards like so. So this will give us two uh, closed off windows here. So it's two, one, and then however many this was, I don't even remember now, but two spaces there. On the right side, it's only one space. Now you may be noticing that the windows don't line up properly here, and unfortunately that's just a quarter of this you know, tiny one-to-one -one scale, so it can't really line up with the windows, unfortunately, without um, in, or in order to get the window spacing right. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on here. So a bit of asymmetry, it's a bit tricky, but uh, yeah. Anyways, now that we have that, for the overwing exits here, we're going to have two quartz stairs facing forwards going back right here. And then just 11 wool stairs facing forwards going back now to finish off the rear. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Like so. On top of this now, we're going to have a long row of 24 blocks to cap all of this up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Same thing on the right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Now going back from this wool slab right there, in between the two forward doors, we're going to add an additional 12 wool half slabs going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. With a quartz stair facing forwards in the center right there. Now five slabs going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then, what we're going to be adding in here is the SATCOM antenna on top. So for this, what we're going to do is grab snow layers. And in the previous layer right here, we're just going to place two temporary blocks there, so we have a base to build off of with the snow. On this first block here, we're going to have six snow layers. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then just five snow layers here on the second one. One, two, three, four, and five. This will give you this kind of curved bump on the top here for the SATCOM antenna. Now, it's important to mention that not all operators will have the SATCOM antenna installed. So if you are building this for a specific livery or whatever, you'll probably want to cross-check with uh, images of the actual aircraft to see if the operator uses the SATCOM antenna or not. If the if it doesn't have the SATCOM installed, what you're just going to have is two wool slabs in its place, so it's just behaving as if, as if it's not there at all. But uh, yeah, I'm including the SATCOM antenna here, so that's what we've got going on. Back from this here, we're going to have two wool slabs going back, like so with a quartz stair facing backwards and a single wool slab there. And that is everything for the fuselage of the 737-800. So if you are building just the 800 variant here, the next thing you'll want to be doing is skipping ahead to the tail cone section, and you'll find a timestamp to that in the description below so you can continue on and finish off this aircraft. And I'll see you with that. Alright, so for the fuselage of the 737-900, we're going to be starting from this wool top slab layer at the bottom of the nose right here. Going back from it here, we're going to have a single wool top slab there, with an upside down quartz stair facing forwards here off of it, like so. Next, we're going to have a total of 12 wool top slabs going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now out to the other side here, we're going to be bringing the 6 more towards the front. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And just stopping there. And that'll start off the front of the wing box right here. Going back here, we're going to have a single wool top slab there in the center, with a nether brick top slab off to either side for the exposed wheels on the underside. Then we're going to have two wool top slabs going back here, one and two, and box this off to either side like so. Going back here, we have a quartz upside down stair facing forwards right there, with a wool top slab off to either side. Then six wool top slabs going back right here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Moving on up here, going back from these four doors, we're going to have 12 blocks of wool going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, like so. Back here for the two overwing exit doors, we're going to have two quartz blocks right there, just like this, back from both of those rows. Then a row of six wool blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now going back from this here, we're going to have a single quartz full block right here. And this is to start off the aft emergency door towards the rear of the aircraft here. Now this is a feature of the 737-900ER. 
If you are building just the 900 variant, not the ER, you're not going to be including this. It's just going to be as if that door isn't there. That door's an addition of the 900 ER, as I've mentioned. So if you're building just the 737-900 instead of the sports full block there, you'll have a wool block like this. We'll also have to modify the windows, but we'll be getting to that when we get to that, so just worry about this for now. But if you're building the 900 ER as I am here, that'll just be a quartz full block there. Anyways, back from this here, we're going to have five blocks of wool. One, two, three. Wow, I froze there. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. And join these last two up there to close off that gap on the underside. Next, uh, coming up to the front here, uh, we're going to be starting off the windows. Now it is important to mention here that there is actually a little bit of asymmetry in the windows here at the front, so the spacing on the left side is different from the spacing on the right side. Starting on the left side here, what we're going to have is seven wool stairs facing backwards, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Full block of wool there, then a single wool stair facing forwards, then one, two, and three facing backwards just like this. That should stop right there in front of the overwing exits. Now on the right side here, it's a little bit different, so we're going to have a full block of wool there, and then eight wool stairs facing forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, like this. Then three wool stairs facing backwards. One, two, and three. This will give you a little bit different uh, spacing here. So on the left side of the aircraft, there are two windows that are blocked off here, while on the right side, there's only a single window that's blocked off. And this is how it is on the real aircraft, so that's what it's... <laughs> That's what's being replicated here. Anyways, going back from this here, to finish off the overwing exits, we're going to have two quartz stairs facing backwards, back from both of those uh, wall stair rows. Back here, we're going to have five wall stairs facing backwards. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Now for the aft emergency exits here, at the rear of the fuselage, we're going to have a full block of wall there for the space between the windows and the emergency door here, and a quartz stair facing forwards like this. We'll stare and a quartz stair facing forwards. Now if you aren't including this door here, if you are building the just the 737-900, you're just going to be having two quartz stairs, or wool stairs rather, facing backwards like this, and then carrying on normally afterwards. But for our purposes here, we're having this uh, uh, quartz stair facing forwards there, and a gap to the front and back of this door. In reality, there's, you know, spaces between the windows for this emergency door, so that's what's, you know, there's, there's a reason that full block is there. Anyways, back from this now, uh, for either variant that you're building, we're just going to have uh, five wool stairs facing backwards here. One, two, three, four, and five. And one, two, three, four, and five, just like this. Now that we have the windows in place to cap off the fuselage here, we're going to have a long row of 26 wool blocks going back from this forward door right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and twenty-six, like so. And I'm not even going to bother counting this one, I'm too lazy for that, just going to bring this all the way in line here. I already know that it lines up, but yeah. Now back from this wool slab right here, to finish off the top of the fuselage, we're going to have 13 wool slabs going back, in addition to this one block there in between the two forward doors. So adding on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, like this. Now going back from this here, we have a quartz stair facing forwards, if I can get that, there we go, for an airfoil extension on the top. Back here we have 5 wool half slabs, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Oop, 5, there we go. And uh, next here, we're going to be grabbing snow layers and adding in the SATCOM antenna on the top. So in the previous layer here, between these uh, blocks here, we're just going to have two quartz, or full, full blocks rather there, to give us a space to build off of with the snow. On top of this first block here, we're going to have six snow layers. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then five there on the second. One, two, three, four, and five. This is going to give you this nice rounded bump for the SATCOM antenna there on the top. Now, it's important to mention that not all operators have the SATCOM antenna installed, so if you are building this for a specific aircraft or something, um, you'll probably want to cross-check with uh, photos of the actual aircraft to see if that operator has the SATCOM antenna installed. So if the SATCOM antenna isn't in use, or if you just don't want to include it in yours, in the space of these two um, snow layers right here, you're just going to have two um, wool slabs like this, just pretending as if it isn't there, just continuing on the fuselage normally. I'm including the SATCOM antenna here though, just for fun. So once you have that all in place there, going back now, we're going to have three wall slabs. One, two, and three. Then a quartz stair facing backwards, 
and a wool slab in the center there to finish off that. Now to finish off the fuselage, there's just one last detail to put in place, so grab a torch. Going down here to the wing box, we have this very first uh, wool slab out to the side there. Coming a block forwards and a block up right there, out from this block in the fuselage, we're going to have a torch right there for the winged light. Same thing on the other side there, so that uh, first torch top slab, or wool top slab rather. Block forwards, block up, and a torch out to the side for the winged light. So with that, that's the fuselage for the 737-900 done. The next thing we're going to be doing is building the tail cone, and just continuing on so we can finish off this aircraft. So we'll see you with that. Alright, so now that we've regrouped after splitting into segments for each of the individual aircraft, the next thing we're going to be doing is adding on the common tail cone. So from here on out, all of this is going to be added in no matter what variant you're building, so I'm just going to be building on the 800 here just for fun, but uh, yeah, this will all apply to you no matter which variant you're building. So we'll be starting off with this row of three down here at the uh, bottom of the fuselage. Back from the center block here, we're going to have a single block of wool with an upside down wool stair facing backwards and a third stair there facing backwards off of that wool block there. Next we'll have a quartz top slab out to either side there to start off the aft exit doors with a row of three wool top slabs across the center and uh, just one more there coming out. So it should give you something looking like this. Next here, on top of this uh, upside down stair right there, the outermost two, we're going to have two blocks of wool going up like this, then two full blocks of quartz right there to finish off the aft doors. Out to the side of this first block up right there, the bottom of the two, we're going to have a stone button there for the door handles. Then two blocks going up on top of those wool top slabs there. Back from this bottom block to the two there, we're going to have a single block of wool there with a wool half slab on top. Join this up with a block of wool in the center. Next going back here, we're going to be coming in from where we have these two full blocks up to the side here. So one and two blocks going back right there. Then two wool half slabs back and four blocks of wool across the top, just like this. Now the next thing we're going to be doing here will actually depend on which variant you're building. So this is for the tail skid here. We're going to have a quartz upside down stair underneath the first of the two uh, wool full blocks right there. Now this is only featured on the 800, 900, and 900 ER models. So the older 700 and 600 don't have this tail skid. So you'll just be leaving it out like this. But again, to put in the tail skid here for the 800 and 900 variants, that's the quartz upside down stair right there. Now the last thing to do here to put in the APU and finish off the tail cone here is to grab a spruce trapdoor and drop that going back from this um, uh, wool top slab right there. Now in the air team pack, this is a cobblestone texture like this. In default, just use an iron trapdoor, but you know this cobblestone texture looks a lot nicer for blending in. It's After all, it's for the shaping, not for the detail. So on top of this here, we're just going to have a cobblestone full block there, and a button behind it. I had to check if I have the button or not, I forgot to make a mention of that in my notes, but yes, it does have a button. So that's what the APU should look like there on the 737 family. It's a very interesting kind of a sloped off APU rather than anything sticking out, so yeah, that's what's going on there. And with that, that is the tail cone done. Alright, so now that we have the tail cone in place here, the next thing we're going to be doing is adding in the vertical stabilizer. So what I'm going to be doing here is building the outline of this vertical stabilizer from the rear edge to the front edge. Starting on top of this very last wool block right there before the APU starts, we're going to have two blocks of wool going up, like this. Now come back right here, we're going to have three blocks going up, one, two, and three, with a wool top slab going back from that top one right there. Two blocks on top of this with a single wool half slab there, then a second going forwards, like so. Full block of wool underneath that second, and a half slab going forwards. Block underneath that half slab. Oop, there we go. Slab going forwards again. And a block underneath. Let's come down at a diagonal angle here. We have one and two. And actually three, rather. So three going diagonal from that there. From this one here, we're going to have two wool slabs going forwards. Then a block of wool diagonally down at an angle like this. Then we're going to turn this single wool half slab there from the fuselage into a wool full block like this. This should give you an angle looking like this. And to cap off all the bottom of this and give us some more to work for, we're just going to fill in this bottom layer right there with wool so it closes off that bit of the fuselage. Now all that we're going to be doing here is just filling in everything between these outlines now with wool, just like this. There's really not a whole lot to it, it's a pretty small vertical stabilizer. And with that, you'll have the vertical stabilizer. With the vertical stabilizer done now, the next thing we're going to be building is the horizontal stabilizers. 
For this, we're going to come down to the tail cone right here, where we have this row of five wool blocks right here. I'm drawing forwards from this APU. Uh, let's see. From the center block right here, we're going to be placing a cobblestone top slab right there, or half slab rather. So you can see how this lines up right there. It's a one block space between the half slab from that outermost layer and the uh, first cobblestone top slab of the horizontal stabilizer's leading edge. So now that we have this marker in place, we're just going to be placing a second cobblestone half slab out to the side like this. Let's come back at an angle and up a layer like this, we're going to have a cobblestone top slab. Then back at an angle in the same layer, a single cobblestone slab right there. Then out to the side, up a layer, a cobblestone half slab. And then out at an angle, just a single smooth stone slab, like so. Should give you an angle looking like this for the leading edge. Going back now, we're going to have a second smooth stone slab, back from that uh, first right there, for the tip of the uh, horizontal stabilizer right there. Now for the elevator detailing here, we're going to be switching over to our stone brick slabs for a little bit. So a single stone brick slab coming directly in towards the center right there. Let's come uh, in forwards at an angle right there. We have a single stone brick slab. Then down a layer right there, a stone brick top slab. Then forwards towards the center right there, a stone brick slab right there. Then a smooth stone slab towards the center, like so. That'll give you the outline of the horizontal stabilizer here. Now to fill this in, like our larger horizontal stabilizers, we don't really have many layering outlines to do. In fact, we only have two, and one of them's done already, as you can see here. So for this, all we're just going to be doing is placing a single smooth stone slab forwards from that uh, innermost stone brick slab right there. Now everything between each layering outline here and the layering outline for the next layer is just going to get filled in with the smooth stone slabs. So to make that rather complex instruction simple, just like this, basically. Smooth stone slab there, there, and there. And you have your horizontal stabilizer. So to finish off the stabilizer for the other side right there, center block these five. Two uh, cobblestone slabs out to the side right there. Back and up a layer, cobblestone top slab. Out at an angle right there, second cobblestone slab. Then up at an angle right there, up a layer, single cobblestone slab there. And back at an angle, smooth stone top slab. Or half slab. Is this a half slab? I don't know. Uh, ha bottom slab. Okay, we, ha we have that there. Second smooth stone slab going back there. Then a stone brick slab towards the center. Forwards one there, stone brick slab. Then down a layer right there, a third stone brick slab. Then just one in forwards towards the center, just like this. And a smooth stone slab to connect in with the rear of the fuselage. Smooth stone slab there, forwards from that stone brick top slab, and just fill all of this in now. Rather weird instructions for this little, you know, complicated bit, but yeah, it should give you a horizontal stabilizer shape looking just like this. So cross check if you need to uh, double check anything. But yeah, now that we have that, that's the horizontal stabilizers done. Alright, now that we have the horizontal stabilizers in place, the next thing we're going to be doing here is starting off the wings. So for this, we're just going to come down to the wing bots. Again, as I mentioned, I'm building on the 800 model here, but this will be the same for you no matter which variant you'll be building, as the wing bot section is the same throughout. So, starting here, where we have this single wool slab there, the top slab that's in this outer layer to start off the wing bots. What we'll be doing here is on the second uh, wool top slab back in this long row here, is placing a cobblestone top slab out to the side just like this. Now for the wings here, we're going to be following a very similar pattern to the horizontal stabilizers, but hopefully in a much less confusing way for the small space that it was. The first thing we're going to be doing though is building off the wing root, and this will give us the space to work with here. After that's done, we're going to be building out the uh, outlines with the leading edge and the trailing edge into connect, then filling it all in with the layering afterwards. So to get the wing root started here, we have this cobblestone top slab right there already for the leading edge slat detailing. On top of this there, we're going to have a spruce trapdoor, or again, an iron trapdoor in default there, to finish off the, uh, well, the slat detailing at the front of the root. Going back here, uh, on this top slab, or half slab layer right here, back from that trapdoor, we're going to have a nether brick uh, half slab right there. And this is to start off the overwing exit markings here on top of the wing. So we have this nether brick slab there, then two quartz slabs going back, nether brick slab there, and a quartz slab like so. So this will give you the white markings here with the kind of the hint at the black outline around and the black arrow in the center there pointing the way down the um, overwing exit. So now that that's done, uh, moving down here, we're going to move down to this top slab layer here. And we have two uh, stone brick top slabs right there to start off the flap outline. 
Next, going forward from that there, we're just going to connect all this in with smooth stone top slabs up to the front there, and that'll give you the wing root outline. Fairly simple. Now that we have the wing root in place, the next thing we're going to do is bring out the leading edge outline. So where we have this cobblestone top slab there with the trapdoor on top, we're going to come back at an angle, and out from that very first smooth stone slab right there, we're going to have a cobblestone top slab with a cobblestone half slab on top. Next, just from this half slab right here, on the top layer, we're going to have two uh, smooth stone slabs coming out at an angle, like this. Next, we're going to do something a little bit different here. So what we're going to do is grab a temporary block, and in from this, um, we have this innermost one right here, the two, down and going forwards from it, basically, we're going to have three temporary blocks right here. One, two, and three. Just any block that you want that uh, will, you know, differ from the wing itself. I'm using blue concrete here just for fun. But, uh, yeah, what this is going to be is a marker for the engine pylon that we're going to put in later after we finish the wings. So make sure that you leave this there. Again, that's three blocks going forwards from the underside of this innermost smooth stone slab. Now that we have that, what we're going to do is grab cobblestone slabs again. Next, uh, coming out at an angle here and up a half slab layer this time, we're going to have a cobblestone top slab there. With a second going back at an angle like this. Next, a row of two cobblestone top slabs going out at an angle. Then one going back at an angle right here. Next, one to cobblestone top slab uh, back at an angle up a layer like this. A half slab this time. Then two cobblestone half slabs out at an angle like this. Now we're going to switch over to a red slab material. So this will be for the beacon light here. This is going to go um, back at an angle right here, just like this. Now, uh, in the Air Team V2 pack, this is on the polished granite slab. So if you're following along a couple months after the release here and you have access to the version 2 pack, this is what you'll want to use. Now, if you are using the version 1 pack, uh, this same red texture is on the brick slab. But if we're in V2 here, it's still, you know, the default brick slab for uh, building detailing and stuff like that. So that won't be the color you'll want to use. But yes, so if you're in version 1, you'll want to use brick slabs, which will have that uh, solid red texture. And if you're in default as well, the closest thing that you'll get to this is a brick slab. So that's what you'll be using. With that mess out of the way, I can throw this all away now. So um, again, this is for the red navlite on the left side of the aircraft here. And now that we have that, the leading edge of the wing is done. So we can continue working our way towards the center with the trailing edge outline. Going back from this here, we're going to have a single smooth stone slab, with one more going in towards the center there. Now switching over to the stone brick slab for the flap, uh, aileron and flap detailing on the trailing edge here. We're going to have a single smooth stone, or stone brick slab rather, going towards the center right here. Then one forwards in at an angle right there. Let's come down a layer, and we have one and two uh, stone brick top slabs going in towards the center. Now going back from this here, grab your temporary blocks and place two of these going back from this uh, second uh, stone brick slab right there. One and two, like this. This will be for our uh, first flap track fairing right here. We've finished off the ailerons in the scale. It's literally three blocks here. Now we've moved on to the flaps, so uh, that'll be the first flap track fairing there. Let's grab your uh, stone brick slabs again. You've got one in towards the center, like this. Then one towards the center, uh, down a half slab layer right here. Just a single one. Actually make that a row of two, my bad, I'm looking at this wrong. So you have two half slabs going in towards the center there. Grab your temporary blocks again, and two going back from that second, just like this. Next, from the smooth stone, or <laughs> not smooth stone, from the stone brick slab right here, we've got two going towards the center, in at an angle, like this. And then, uh, where we have this, um, in the wing root here, <laughs> this row of two, just bring one out from that uh, last one. Just like this, basically. I can't explain it any better than that. And grab your temporary blocks, and two more going back from it, just like this. And with that, we have the wing outline complete. So the next thing we're going to be doing here is bringing our layering outlines in. So for each layer, we're just going to make an outline for it, and then fill everything in. So we're going to be starting right here at the base, uh, with a rather simple layer here. We have this um, stone slab right here. Just bring a smooth stone slab in towards the center, just like this. And you'll see that connects in with the... Uh, layer right there with that quartz slab. Quite simple. For the next layer up here, what we have is one and two smooth stone slabs in towards the center diagonally, like so. On top of the second here that we just placed, grab a birch button, 
and we're going to place this on top like this. Make, the, make sure that it's uh, aligned uh, parallel to the aircraft like this, so facing forwards instead of sideways like this. This is for a detail on the top of the wing. Next, come in towards the center here, and we have two going forwards, and that should connect up with that cobblestone slab right there. Now for our third and final layering outline here, we're just going to, from this um, stone brick half slab right there, bring one and two uh, smooth stone slabs forwards at an angle just like this. So with that, that is literally everything there is to it for the layering outlines, for the top face that is. The flap outline is just a single block thick here, so we don't have to worry about uh, adding in any more final details before we fill it all in. So we're just going to do the same thing that we did with the horizontal stabilizers. So anywhere that there is an empty gap here between the layering outline and the next one up here, we're just going to be filling that in with the smooth stone slabs. So just like this, filling everything in across here. And here we go. That's all there is to it for the top face. So now that we have the top face all filled in here, uh, the bottom face isn't looking quite as good. It's a little bit hollow. So what we're going to be doing to fix this here is, uh, well, filling in the layering outlines for the bottom. We'll be starting right here at this very uh, base layer right here, in between this cobblestone top slab there and the stone brick top slab. We're just going to be filling that in with a solid row here of smooth stone top slabs. For the next layer up here, where we have these two smooth stone half slabs here, we're going to come back at an angle right here with a row of three, one, two, and three, just like this, and then just one smooth stone slab right there between that stone slab that was already there and the stone brick slab. We'll fill in this space right in there. Now for this last layer here, where we have this uh, cobblestone top slab right there, just place two smooth stone slabs going back right there to connect up with that uh, stone brick slab. And with that, the layering for the wing is complete. So now that we have the shape of the wing itself put in, it's time to add in the final details. We'll be starting here with the engine pylon. So where we have these three temporary blocks that we placed out here, what we're going to be doing is on top of these uh, two exposed right here, we're going to have a smooth stone half slab there with a jungle trapdoor in front. Now, another error team pack note uh, in version two here, this is a, the jungle trapdoor here is a smooth stone texture. In the old version 1 of this pack, the same smooth stone texture is actually on the iron trapdoor, so that's what you'll want to use instead. But in the version 2 pack here, the two have switched roles, so I'm using the jungle trapdoor personally. In default as well, again, just use the iron trapdoor for that. That's the closest you'll get. Anyways, now that we have the uh, top portion of the pylon in there to connect up with the engine, to finish off the engine pylon here, we're going to be knocking out that third temporary block right there. And back from this, uh, well, the space that we created here, we're going to have a row of five uh, smooth stone top slabs here. One, two, three, four, and five. And a jungle trapdoor, or again, iron trapdoor there, back from that. Anyways, with that, that's the engine pylon done there. So the next thing we're going to be doing is adding in the flap track fairings. We'll be starting from the inside here. So where we have these two temporary blocks right here. What we're going to be doing is knocking out this uh, foremost one there and replacing it with a smooth stone top slab. That's all there is to it. For the second one here, what we have is uh, we'll be knocking out this foremost one there and replacing it with a jungle trapdoor on the bottom half. Underneath it here, we're going to have a jungle trapdoor on the top half, or again, iron trapdoors if I haven't said that enough. And forwards from this here, we have a stone brick slab and a smooth stone slab, just like that to round off on the underside. For the third and final flap track fairing here, again, knock out that Ford's most one of the temporary blocks right there. Replace it with a stone half slab on the bottom half, with a stone brick slab going forwards, and a smooth stone slab right there. Once you have that, that is all of the final details in place. So what we're going to do now is just knock out the remnants of the temporary blocks that we have in place. So engine pylon and all three flap track fairings there. So now that you have that all in place, the next thing to do is just mirror this entire wing over to the other side of the aircraft. If you like, you can find a timestamp back to when we started the wing in the description below, as always. So yeah, just smear that all over, and I'll catch you once that's done. And this is what your finished wing should look like copied over to the other side of the aircraft here. Now there's one more thing that we have to do to finish this off, and that is to replace this red nav light on the right side of the aircraft with a green nav light. So in the air team pack here, we're going to be replacing this with the prismarine bright slab. That's the green slab color we have here in the air team pack, and that's what we'll be using for the green nav light. Now in default, um, you won't exactly have a you know a solid green color like this. Uh, dark prismarine will probably work in its place as kind of a kind of a more bluish green um, 
alternative, you know, it'll, it'll give the suggestion of green, which is what's important, but, uh, yeah, it, it's up to your discretion. But, uh, yeah. So now that we have the nav lights corrected, everything's good for the wings. Next we can move on to the engines. So for our two CFM56 engines here on the 737, we're going to be starting underneath this trap door here in the engine pylon with a uh, wolf full block right there, and a second going out from it just like this. For the inlet cowling at the front, we're going to use stone brick. We're going to have a stone brick stair facing out to the side, going forwards from both of those just like this, kind of facing away from each other, with two smooth stone, or stone brick top slabs rather, underneath them just like this. This will give the kind of flattened appearance on the underside of the CFM56 engines that are so characteristic. That's what we're going to do here is uh, going back from these two smooth stone top slabs right there. There I go again. Stone brick top slabs rather. We're going to have two wool top slabs just like this, making a 2x2 two two box. Then two spruce trapdoors going back for the to kind of start off the exhaust here at the rear. Again in the air team pack, that's the cobblestone top slab, uh, or cobblestone trapdoor texture as I mentioned with the APU. In default, you'll probably want to use iron trapdoors for that. Now to finish off the engine cowling here, we're going to have a wool stair facing out to the side on top of that last top slab right there. And a wool stair in the same way on the inside right there. Next we've got a cobblestone half slab back from that outermost um, wool stair there. And a, uh, see if I can grab it here, smooth stone slab there in that gap to finish off the pylon connection with the engine. And uh, also finish off the exhaust and all that there. It's a rather tiny engine, but that's all there is to it for the CFM56. So we're just going to be building this on the other side as well here. Again, that's a full block underneath that uh, trapdoor, if I can place that right. And a second going out to the side, just like this. For the inlet here, two stonebird stairs facing away from each other like this, with two stonebird top slabs underneath, like so. Then a 2x2 two two box of your wool top slabs going back. Then uh, two wool stairs facing away from each other on top of those, just like this. Two cobblestone um, trapdoors back from those wool top slabs right there. And then a cobblestone half slab back from that outermost wool stair. And a smooth stone slab in there to fill in that gap. And with that, that is everything for the engines. Next up here is going to come a bit of a moment of choice yet again. So the next thing we're going to be adding in here is the blended winglets. Now if you're building the 600 variant, this is not going to include the winglets. It's just going to stay with the flat wingtips like this. It's an older aircraft and it was... I, I don't believe any of the 600s in operation were ever retrofitted, or were even able to be retrofitted with uh, winglets at all. And as I mentioned with the dimensions at the start as well, uh, there are a select few um, of the other members of the NG family that didn't have winglets installed. Um, I think Alaska Airlines has a 900 from the like the original productions uh, run that uh, was never retrofitted with winglets, but um, or produced with winglets that is. But uh, yeah, so if you're building the 700, 800, or 900, it is more than likely that you'll be adding in the blended winglets. There's also another choice coming up with the split scimitar winglets, but again, we'll get to that later when the time comes. So if you're building the 737-600 or any of the other variants without winglets here. Uh, and you're not even building the winglets at all, uh, you can skip ahead to the landing gear via the timestamps in the description below. If you are building the blended winglets though, let's get going on that here. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is back from the nav light right here, we're going to be replacing that smooth stone top slab there, or uh, half slab rather, with a wool half slab like this. This is because the blended winglet not only extends out from the tip of the winglet, it replaces the wingtip assembly. You know, it blends in with the wingtip. So that section of the wingtip that was previously left exposed like this is going to get um, replaced with the, you know, the paintable winglet section. So that's what's going on here. That's going to be in line with the nav light there. Now going out from this here, we're going to have a wall stair facing forwards, like so, with an upside down wall stair facing backwards off of its rear face like this. Next come out here and we have a wool stair facing forwards there, again an upside down wool stair facing backwards, and a wool half slab on top. That's all there is to it for the base blended winglets here, and we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So blend it in with the tip of the wing there with that wool half slab, wool stair facing forwards, upside down wool stair facing backwards, wool stair facing forwards, upside down wool stair backwards, and a slab on top. And that'll give you the blended winglets. Now the next thing we're going to be adding in here is the split scimitar winglets. So this is the newest iteration of the blended winglets. It features a scimitar at the top here and an extra split down at the base. Uh, 
all basically all of the newer aircraft will feature this, and as well some of the older uh, winglets will be or have been retrofitted with this. So basically, the best advice I can give you if you want to add this for realism is check which you, you know just have have a look at the pictures of the aircraft that you're building, and check if the operator is using the split scimitars or not. Um, for instance, I know KLM, their entire fleet is using just the blended wingtips like this, so it really does depend. As I mentioned back at the start, if you're not building the split scimitars and you just want to uh, skip ahead to the landing gear, timestamp for that's in the description. Anyways though, let's get going on the split scimitars. The first step here is to add in the scimitar itself. This is an extension at the top of the wingtip right here, going back. So for this, back to this uh, wool half slab right here, we're just going to have a wool top slab going back from it off at an angle like this. Now for the split portion of the split scimitar, this is going to be coming down here. So what we'll have for this is a top slab coming down from that uh, very last upside down stair there, with a half slab down a layer back from it, just like this. And that'll do it for the split scimitar. So we'll do this on the other side here. Again, that's a top slab back from that half slab there at the top of the blended winglet, a top slab there down from that upside down stair, and a half slab behind, just like this. And that is everything for the split scimitars. So now that we have that, that is just about everything for the exterior here. Since this isn't such a small scale, we obviously can't include an interior here with only a one block space to work with. So all that's left in the tutorial now is the final configurations. I'll be first adding in the landed gear for the ground version of the aircraft, and then showing you how to add in the flaps configurations. If you're building the 737 in flight with the landed gear retracted and no flaps extended, then you're done with this tutorial, and you can skip right on ahead to the end of the video. Otherwise, let's get going on the landing gear. Alright, so for the landing gear, the 737 here, we'll be starting up at the nose, where we have these two quartz top slabs for the uh, nose gear door here. What we're going to be doing is knocking out both of these here. And in its place here, where we have this gap now that we've made, what we'll be doing is placing a cobblestone wall uh, in this rear gap right here, this last block back there with a wool slab going forwards from it there to close off that gap. Now to close off the gap above the wall here, where it connects in with the internal assembly, we'll have a smooth stone full block up there to close that off. For the wheel itself, we're going to have a black wool full block down from that cobblestone wall there, with a stone button out to either side, just like that to finish off the rim detailing. And the last thing we're going to do now is grab port stairs, we're going to have a quartz upside down stair coming off of it, facing out to the side just like this. Then an upside down quartz stair facing forwards to corner off like so. That's for the nose gear doors there opened out to the side. Same thing on the right side here, so upside down quartz stair out to the side, and a upside down quartz stair facing forwards just like this. So that's everything for the nose gear. So next we can move on to the main landing gear. For this we're going to come to the underbelly of the aircraft here, if I can sneak to the end of the wing here. So where we have this netherbrick top slab right there, in the uh, underbelly here, where the landing gear is exposed, what we're going to be doing is knocking out that netherbrick top slab there, same thing on the other side here, and as well the wool top slab going back from it, so back just like this, and um, this will give a space in here for the wheel well that we're going to work on later. So for the wheel itself here, this is going to be a bit different, so it's not just going to be a um, black wool full block like this, Due to the way the dimensions of the 737 work out in real life, the main landing gear here actually uh, fall between block layers. So what this means is we're going to be using vertical slabs to um, push the wheel half a block back. So this is going to fall right between where we have these two blocks here, so a uh, vertical slab on this block and this block in between these two. For this we're going to be using the dead fire coral fan here in the R-Team pack, which is a black wool vertical slab like this. So, let's see. In order to make this easy for ourselves, what we're going to be doing here, uh, I'm just going to grab a temporary block, and uh, this is going to go out a block right here, so um, in line with the wing root, you know, out a block from <laughs> where the fuselage is, like this. And we're going to have two temporary blocks right here in line with that gap that we created. On the front face here, we're going to have a dead fire coral fan. Again, that's the black wool vertical slab. 
grab a stick slash REPL0 to switch that over to the play stool. You probably have that already if you're following along in one go, but I've had to reload between takes here, so I don't have that. Anyways, here, just make sure you're in fast mode, so that's slash slash fast. This will make sure that the uh, coral blots won't update each other and uh, make things kind of nasty. If you're not in fast mode when you try to place these in, they'll just break each other, so that won't work well. Make sure you're in fast. Simple as that. So, select that vertical slab there and paste over the first temporary block. Same thing on the back here. Uh, vertical slab going back, that's the dead fire curl fan. Select and paste, like so. That'll give you this black wool full block here, shifted between block layers. So now that we have the wheel in place there, the next thing we're going to be doing is putting in the strut and gear door here. So, uh, what we're first going to do here is, above where we have these two vertical slabs, you'll see we have this uh, second uh, stone brick top slab there for the flap outline then this smooth stone top slab there. What we're going to do is knock out that smooth stone top slab, one more going out to the side, and then that one behind it right there. So this little L pattern in the underside of the wing. In its place here, above this uh, vertical slab for the wheel, we're going to have an upside down stone bird stair facing forwards, then an upside down stone bird stair facing out to the side here, and finally we're going to grab a wool stair and have a upside down wool stair here facing in towards the center. Now this is a bit of a mess now, but what we're going to do here is use some world edit tricks to clean all of this off. So, let's start with the um, <laughs> strut here. So, where we have this upside down stone bird stair facing towards the front, you can see this is kind of made a, a bit of a wall right there. That's not how the detail is supposed to go. So, this is here in the center is the strut, and this out to the side here is the start of the uh, gear door. So what we can do is uh, grab that same replace tool that we used to put in that wheel there, grab that corner stair, and actually paste it over that uh, upside down stair facing forwards right there. And what this will do is turn it into a, uh, well, you know, trick it into staying as a corner stair. So this will keep it as a more vertical strut connecting into the um, wheel itself here on the uh, back center portion of the stair right here. So that'll differentiate it from the uh, gear door here as opposed to just being a flat wall across, which isn't that realistic. So now that we have that strut in place there, the next thing we're going to do is also curve off this um, gear door here a little bit. So it's an upside down wall stair facing in towards the center currently. What we can do is place an upside down stair facing towards the center here, and then uh, corner it off with an upside down stair facing backwards coming off of it like this. So this will get that pillar there on the forward left um, portion of that stair. <laughs> We're going to select that corner stair now and paste it over this um, wool stair that we had right there. So this will give it a more slim um, footprint for the uh, uh, gear door in the underside here. So now that we have the gear door in place there to finish off the main landed gear, what we're going to do is next put in the gear well. So for this, in this little space that we knocked out here, where we have these two wool blocks there above, we're going to knock out both of these and replace them with wool upside down stairs facing in towards the center, like this. Next, uh, before we continue here, what we're going to do is um, put in a lever here coming off of this upside down stair for the gear strut. This is for the support strut that connects in with the, you know, the retraction mechanism in the inside here. So, for this, this is going to be pretty interesting, because while it's just a lever sticking off, um, we don't want to place another block here, because that'll give a block update to all of these corner stairs that we just rounded off, and that'll break everything. So what we're going to do is uh, select this top slab right here, that wool top slab, and making sure that we're in, still in fast mode, facing back here, slash slash stack. This will stack that top slab there one back, so we now have a block in this space here, without giving any of those a block update. And that's crucial to not going through that pain all over again. So the next thing we're going to do here is just place a temporary block anywhere with a lever facing off of it, like so, towards the center here. Select this with your replace tool, then come here. Now make sure that um, when you paste over this wall top slab here, you're shift clicking when you do so. If you just right click normally, not shifting or crouching at all, it will activate the lever as you paste and we'll still end up giving a block update to all of those stairs. So making sure that we're shifting here, paste over that wool top slab. Boom, we have that lever in place. Perfect. Again, that's for the support strut here connecting in with the inside of the gear well here. Speaking of the gear well, let's close this off here so we don't have this ugly gap staring into the center. So for this, what we have here is a 
we're going to grab a cobblestone stair and a uh, prison room brick stair here. What we'll have first here is an upside down cobblestone stair facing towards the back of the aircraft here, if I can get in this space. There we go. So right in there on that first block, the Ford's most one right here, we have an upside down cobblestone stair facing backwards. Now on the last block right here, we're gonna have an upside down prismarine brick stair facing backwards, just like this. And this will finish off all of the detailing here for the exposed section of the inside of the gear well here. And that is everything for the main landing gear. So we're just going to repeat the same process on the other side here. So where we have these two spaces knocked out, temporary block one below and out right here in line with the wing route. Uh, dead fire coal fan forwards, select and paste. Backwards, select and paste. Next, upside down um, cobblestone, not cobblestone, upside down stone bricks that stare there facing forwards. Knock that one out to the side and back. Round that off with an upside down stair facing uh, out to the side right here. And an upside down wall stair facing towards the center to start off the gear doors. Select that corner stair there, paste over for the gear strut. Then come out here. We have an upside down wall stair facing towards the center there. And round that off with a stair facing backwards off of its rear face like this. Select that corner stair and paste over like so to finish off the gear door. Now on the inside here, we're just going to use the same trick. So select that wool stair there, or up, uh, wool top slab rather. Stack one to get a block in that space there. Grab your lever, place that off here facing towards the center. Select, and you can get rid of that now. Then make sure that you're shift clicking when you do this. Right click over that top slab to paste. Perfect. That'll get that strut in place there. Knock out these two blocks above and two wool upside down stairs facing towards the center to round off the inside of the gear well. And with that, that is everything for the main landing gear of the 737. So now that we have the landing gear in place, the last thing we have to work on for the 737 is the flaps configurations. If you're not interested in building any flaps for this, if you have it parked at a gate or if you're building a display model or something and would just prefer to leave the flaps retracted, then you're done with this tutorial, and you can skip right on ahead to the end of the video. Otherwise, let's get the flaps started. Alright, so for the flaps configurations here, again, to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the video, what we have here is flaps 5 for takeoff and flaps 30 for landing. Now what we're going to be starting with here, before we even get to any of that, is the leading edge slats here. So these extend with flaps 1, so whenever any sort of flaps are extended, no matter the configuration, these will always be extended too. So what we're going to be starting with here is the inboard leading edge flaps between the uh, root of the wing and the engine pylon here. So on the 737, the inboard flaps here are cruder flaps. So instead of normal slats, which uh, basically just kind of drop down and forwards from the top of the wing here, the cruder flaps on the inboard section here actually fold out from underneath the uh, leading edge of the wing. So in order to replicate this, what we're going to first do here is grab our spruce trapdoors again. And let's see, let's start in this first block right here, where we have this cobblestone top slab right there. What we're going to have here is a spruce trapdoor closed against it like this. Then we're going to knock out that cobblestone top slab there and replace it with a second uh, spruce trapdoor opened into it. So this whole assembly has kind of folded down and under forwards just like this. We're going to do essentially the same thing here for this cobblestone top slab right there, where we'll place a cobblestone top slab forwards from it like this, and then knock out that cobblestone top slab that was previously there. In its place here we're going to have a jungle trapdoor to um, kind of close off the underside of the wing right here. And that is just about everything for the cruder flaps there. Fairly simple. And we can just repeat the same process on the other side here. So, cobblestone trapdoor closed against that top slab right there, or again, iron trapdoor in default. Knock out that top slab now, replace it with a second trapdoor closed against. Bring a top slab forwards from that top slab right there, knock it out, and replace with a gentle trapdoor to close off the smooth stone coloration on the underside of the wing. And with that, that is the cruder flaps in place. Now for the slats here, on the outboard section of the wing, between the engine pylon and the wing tip right there, uh, well, these are slats, as I said, so what these do is they basically extend down and forwards from the top of the wing, drooping over. I, I can't really explain it any better than that. Look up a picture. A picture can explain it a lot better than I can. Anyways, what we're going to have for this, um, we're just going to start from the inboard section here where we have that uh, top slab right there next to the engine pylon. We're going to knock out that top slab and replace it with a half slab. 
So basically all of this is just going to go down like this. So this top slab here, replace that with a half slab. Same thing here. So these two top slabs are going to change to half slabs. So they're sticking out below the uh, tip of the wing right here. And same thing here with this top slab. Replace that with a half slab right there. Now where we have this uh, half slab here, up, up a layer right here, this is going to get replaced with a half slab, or excuse me, a top slab there, kind of going down like this, getting confused with my block orientations. And now for these last two here, these two um, cobblestone half slabs here, this is going to actually change to a trapdoor layer. So we're going to have two spruce trapdoors underneath, and then replace these two um, half slabs there with trapdoors to kind of uh, thin it off like this. Now there's one last thing we're going to do here. As you can see, due to how the layering works for this top layer of the wing, we now have a full block exposed at the front, and this kind of looks horrible and bad. So in order to fix this, we're going to use a bit of a cheaty solution. That's just to delete that smooth stone half slab there to round off that layer. It's a bit strange, but it, it works. That'll just make things a lot nicer. Anyways, we can just do the same thing for the uh, leading edge slots on the right side of the aircraft here. So just drop all of these uh, half slabs down a layer, just like this. And then for these last two here at the very tip of the wing, trapdoors underneath, and replace the slabs with trapdoors like so. And that is everything for the- oop, oh, I lied. Okay, fits that layer, just like that. And with that, that is everything for the leading edge flaps. So now that we have the slots extended, the next thing we're going to want to do is, of course, add in the flaps themselves. As I said, I'll be starting with the takeoff flaps, and then building the landing flaps afterwards. If you're building the landing flaps yourself, you'll find a timestamp to that in the description. Otherwise, let's get going on the takeoff flaps. Alright, so for the takeoff flaps here, which is flaps 5, the first thing we're going to be doing is extending the flap track fairings out, and that'll give us some more to build off of for the flaps panels themselves. So we'll be starting with the inboard flap track fairing here, this very first one. What we're going to do here is replace this stone brick top slab with a stone brick full block. But in order to do that, without updating all of these stairs here and making things painful for ourselves, what we're going to do is just make that stone brick full block somewhere else here, grab that with world edit, and paste over like this. That'll keep all of these stairs nicely cornered off without breaking or anything. So now that we have that um, stone brick full block in place there, the next thing we're going to do is take this smooth stone half slab right there, move it down a half layer right here, so you have this uh, bottom half stone slab right there. Then underneath it here, we're going to place a general trapdoor like so. This will give it this kind of downwards inclination here for that first flip track fairing. Now for the second one here, where we have this um, smooth stone slab right there, and this stone brick slab right there afterwards, that top slab, we're going to replace that with a full block by placing a half slab underneath right here. Then we're going to knock out these two trapdoors right there and place a smooth stone half slab coming off of that full block, again giving it this very slight downwards inclination like so. And for the third and final flap tuck fairing here, what we're going to be doing is grabbing gentle trapdoors and placing these underneath the stone brick full block right there and this smooth stone half slab. Now what we're going to do here is well, knock out that stonework full block and half slab right there, place this with a stonework stair facing backwards right here, and a gentle trapdoor on top, just like this, again, to give it a slight downwards inclination. Now that we have the fairings in place to start pushing down the flaps here, we're going to start from the outside where we have this stonework top slab right there. We're going to replace that with a half slab down a layer, just like this. You'll see we already have this half slab there uh, coming in from it. And this third half slab here we're going to knock out, so you have just that smooth fairing shape in there without the weird verticalness coming off of it. Next here we have these two stone brick half slabs right here. We're going to knock those out and move them down a layer. We're going to have to replace that uh, trapdoor right there for the engine pylon, and uh, we'll have those in place right there. And finally the last thing we're going to do here is, you see where we have this now row of four coming across, we're going to knock out this uh, very innermost one, that fourth one right there of the stone brick top slabs and replace that with a stone brick stair facing backwards just like this to finish off the curvature of the flaps. Anyways, once we have that, that's everything for flaps 5. So we'll just do the same thing on the other side here. So starting from the inside where we have this uh, stone brick full block, or top slab right there, we'll replace that with a stone brick full block, with a smooth stone half slab coming off of it, and a gentle trapdoor underneath like so. For the second fairing right here, turn that stone brick top slab into a full block, Knock out those two trapdoors, and we've got a half slab coming off of it with the smooth stone 
And we can just go ahead and knock out that half slab on top of the full block right there just to clean things up for now. And for the very last fairing right here, two jungle trapdoors underneath there. Replace that smooth stone slab right there with a jungle trapdoor and a stonebird stair facing backwards, like so. Replace that stonebird top slab there with a half slab to shift it down a layer. Then shift these two half slabs here down a layer and replacing that trapdoor from the engine pylon. And for this very last slab right here in this row of four, replace that with a stonebird stair facing backwards. And that is everything for the flaps. Anyways, once we have that, that's everything for flaps five. It's not too large of a build at all, so there's nothing more to clean up on the underside here. It's pretty simple in essence, even though it took me three hours to design all the configurations for this tiny devil. But yeah. Alright, so for the landing flaps, which I've configured for as the standard of flaps 30, the first thing that we're going to be doing is extending the flap track fairings out here to give us a platform to build off of for the flaps themselves. We'll be starting here with this uh, innermost uh, flap track fairing here, where we have this stonebird slab there sticking out. So what we're going to be doing here is first replacing this uh, stonebird top slab right there with a stonebird stair facing backwards. And in order to do this without updating all of the corner stairs here and messing all of that up, what we're going to have here is uh, we're just going to place down a stonebird stair facing backwards just anywhere. Select that with a replace tool and paste over like this, and that'll keep all of those stairs in nicely without you having to redo all of that. Next here, going back, what we're going to have is a uh, smooth stone uh, half slab coming off of it. Actually, that's a top slab down a layer, I believe, right here than a jungle trapdoor on its face like this. If that was a bit confusing at all, that'll just give you this pointed segment looking like this. Now, uh, what we can actually do now as well is uh, extend the part of the uh, engine pylon that's the uh, second fairing right here at the end. Uh, so for this, what we're going to have here is we're going to be replacing this top slab with a uh, uh, smooth stone stair facing down. And, well, you may be familiar that that isn't really something that's in Minecraft. So what we have here in the Air Team version 2 pack is a mossy stone brick stair as the smooth stone texture like this. Now, uh, in default, if you don't have the option to have that, or if you're using the V1 pack still, what you'll want to use probably is a stone brick stair, but this is a better alternative to that because, you know, this is the part that's the uh, actual smooth stone portion of the wing that's not the flap outline, so this allows for more consistency. But yeah. Smooth stone stair here, or stonebird stair in V1 or default. And for this, you'll see that that's also adjacent to that world edit corner stair. So we're going to be using that same trick as we did there. So just place that there, uh, upside down facing towards the front of the aircraft. Select that and paste over the top slab like so. Now we can knock out that uh, jungle trapdoor that was there previously, and replace it with a uh, stonebird full block for now, I believe. Actually, that's going to be a second stonebird stair facing backwards like this with a jungle trapdoor underneath, like so. That'll give that little bit of the engine pylon there. For the second fairing out here, uh, where we have this uh, smooth stone top slab right there, we're going to have a jungle trapdoor coming forwards from it, like this. Now, where we have this uh, smooth stone, or stone brick top slab rather, we're going to turn that into a stone brick full block, just like this, with a jungle trapdoor underneath it, and a smooth stone slab coming forwards. And we'll knock out these two jungle trapdoors there, and we can also get rid of that uh, stone half slab on top of the full block there. And we'll also have a jungle trapdoor on top of that smooth stone full block right there to finish off the angle of the fairing. And for the third and final flap track fairing here, what we're going to have is, uh, let's see, we'll bring a second smooth stone slab forwards from that first one right there. We're going to have a jungle trapdoor underneath that first one, or the second back rather, this one right here. Jungle trapdoor there. Then a smooth stone slab underneath that um, stonework full block there, with a stonework full block behind that smooth stone uh, top slab. Then a smooth stone top slab back from the full block with a jungle trapdoor underneath, just like this. And we can also get rid of that um, smooth stone slab right there that was on top of that uh, full block that was left over. So that'll give us the third and final flap track fairing now. These are sticking out at a bit of an angle that's kind of weird, but now we can work on filling all of this in. So to get started on this, the first thing we're going to do here is, uh, let's see, I'll start from the inside. So where we have these two uh, stone brick top slabs right here on the inside section, what we're going to do is replace this second top slab back there with a half slab, 
and then have a second top slab underneath like this, just to give this kind of curved uh, wall shape at the end. Next, going out now, where we have this uh, stone brick half slab right there. We're going to shift that down a layer right there, so we have a stone brick top slab in its place. Then a half slab coming off of that full block there to finish off that curvature. Next, coming out here, where we have this uh, stone brick half slab in right here already. We're going to leave that as it is and have a stone brick top slab underneath it. Then a half slab coming off, uh, going back just like this. We have the stone brick top slab now. We're going to shift that down a layer as well. So it's a row of two half slabs across right there. Then a stone brick top slab down uh, like so. Next, where we have this uh, stone brick full block right here, we're going to replace that with a stone brick half slab, just like this. Leave that top slab in place uh, as it is there, and then drop a half slab coming off of it back at an angle like so. And that will give you the final shape for the landing flaps here. So once we have that, we can just do the same thing on the right side of the aircraft. So starting in this first uh, flap track fairing right here, We'll be replacing that Stumbert uh, top slab there with a Stumbert stair facing backwards. Then replace that smooth stone top slab there with a gentle trapdoor and a smooth stone top slab underneath, like so. And for the flap track fairing portion at the end of the engine pile on here, what we're going to be doing is just again placing a smooth stone stair upside down facing forwards, just like this. Selecting it with world edit and pasting over that uh, last top slab right there in line. Knock out all of this above back here. We will have a stonebird stair facing backwards, like so, with a jungle trapdoor underneath to finish off that little uh, bit at the end. Now that we have that for the second flap track fairing out there, jungle trapdoor coming forwards from that smooth stone uh, slab right there. Turn that stonebird top slab into a stonebird full block. Next, we can knock out those two trapdoors and the half slab above the full block, and we'll have a jungle trapdoor on the top half underneath that stonebird full block there a smooth stone top slab off of it like this, and a trapdoor on top. And for the third and final flap track fairing here, we've got a uh, smooth stone slab coming off of that slab that was already there, with a gentle trapdoor underneath the second one back, a smooth stone top slab there, then a stone brick full block going back. We can knock out that um, smooth stone half slab that was on top there. And we'll have a smooth stone half slab coming off of the, that uh, stone brick full block there. And a jungle trapdoor underneath, just like that. And that'll give us the flap track fairings in place. So to start extending all of the flaps out now, what we can do is come down to the inside here. Where we have that stone brick top slab, replace that with a stone brick stair facing backwards, with a stone brick top slab underneath, like so. Then, coming out here, uh, where we have this uh, stone brick half slab there, we'll shift that down a layer, just like this with a half slab coming off of it back at an angle like so. Next up here, where we have this half slab right there and the top slab out to the side, we'll shift that top slab down a layer so they're both in line like this. Underneath this innermost half slab, we'll have a top slab underneath with a half slab coming back at an angle like so. Then from the outer half slab there, a top slab off at an angle just like this. And where we have this uh, smooth stone or stone brick uh, full block right there, we'll replace that with a stone brick half slab. And then where we have that top slab, we'll have a stone brick half slab coming off at an angle just like this. And with that, that is all of the flaps extended out of the wing. So with that all in place, this is how the aircraft will be configured on final approach with the landing flaps of flaps 30 extended and the landing gear extended as well. Now there's one last thing I have in store for you all. So we can also configure this to be decelerating on the runway. So, for that to happen, we'll have the ground spoilers extended and the thrust reverses deployed. So, if you'd like to build that all, we'll be covering that next. Or if you'd like to just keep this as it is on final approach or whatever, then, uh, yeah, you can just leave it like that. So with that, you'll be done with this tutorial. And, as I've said before, you can just skip right on ahead to the end of the video. Otherwise, if you'd like to include the ground spoilers and thrust reverses, we'll be covering that now. So we'll be starting here with the speed brakes. On the 737, the spoilers are broken up into three different sections. There's the uh, flight spoilers in the kind of the center of the wing right here that deploy very gently and can also deploy in flight for uh, slowing the aircraft down, obviously. There's also two other sections that are only used for the ground spoilers, and that is here and here. And these deploy all the way to uh, decelerate the aircraft when it's on the runway. We'll be starting with the inboard section of the ground spoilers here. For this, what we're going to do is knock out this uh, smooth stone half slab there, and then grab a temporary block, 
and grab a dead tube core fan, place this down on its rear face like this, select it with the replace tool, and we'll be pasting it over this uh, stone brick top slab right there. And this is to kind of tunnel through the wing right here. When the flaps are fully extended and the speed brake panels are deployed, that section of the wing is, well, you know, not there. So this will all be hollow as we continue building along here. Now, the same thing would kind of happen here with this um, wool stair. It would, of course, you'd be able to see through it, but just due to how things work here, because that's uh, stuck there for the uh, gear doors, we can't really break through that at all, so it's just kind of left as it is. One of the limitations of working in a smaller scale, but one also one of the fun challenges. Anyways, now that we have the uh, portion there knocked out where the speed brake panels would deploy from, we can put in the actual speed brake panels themselves. So what we'll have here is uh, we'll knock out this uh, smooth stone half slab going forwards from that there, and replace it with a smooth stone stair right there. Again, that's the mossy stone brick stairs in the version 2 pack. But in defaults or the version 1 pack, you'll probably have to use the uh, stone brick stairs. And for the other block here, again, we'll just knock out that quartz half slab there and replace it with a quartz stair facing forwards. So that'll give you this inboard section of the ground spoilers deployed. Now, moving out here for the uh, flight spoilers here, what we're going to do is grab our smooth stone slabs again. We're going to skip this smooth stone slab right here. And where we have this next one out, this one, we're going to knock that out. Then... Uh, this one out at an angle from it, this second full block now going out to the side from it, and this third top slab right there, and then what we're going to do from here is, uh, let me see, come out at an angle here, and this smooth stone full block is going to go, and then uh, this uh, smooth stone half slab and top slab right there. And I said that this was just for the flight spoilers, but I just went ahead and knocked out that entire row for us to get started. So we're gonna be starting right here with a uh, smooth stone half slab coming off of that smooth stone full block right there. Then a second half slab out at an angle, just like this, and a second coming off of it. And this is for the gentler portion of the flight spoilers, which kind of uh, come at a less steep, maybe 45 degree angle or so than the uh, harsher ground spoilers. And for this outboard section of the ground spoilers here, we're going to grab the dead tube coral fan, which is the smooth stone vertical slab. For this, we're going to grab a barrier block, and what we're going to have here is a barrier on top of that um, stone brick top slab right there, or stone top slab rather, with a dead tube coral fan coming off of it, like so. And where we have this uh, smooth stone full block right there, we're going to be replacing this with a uh, smooth stone stair facing uh, backwards, if I can get this correct there, just like this, or again, uh, stone brick stair if you need to. And then we're going to have a jungle trapdoor on top of that half slab right there, just to smooth off the flap track fairing. Next, a barrier on top of that stone brick um, trapdoor right there, with a dead tube coral fan coming off, just like this. And then a jungle trapdoor coming off at an angle, closed against the edge right there. That'll finish off that section of the ground spoilers. Now to finish off the spoilers here, the last thing we're going to do is come to where we had that trapdoor and place a jungle trapdoor in front of it, just like this, to finish off that uh, layering for the top layer right there. You'll remember this is where we knocked out that um, uh, stone half slab there to kind of fix up the layering, and that's what's going on here. It's, that's just to replace that section of the layering. Anyways, now that we have that, uh, what we can do next is start detailing all of the gaps that are in here. So what we're going to do is grab a button, I can throw away the barriers for now, and starting on this inner flap track fairing right here, on top of it we're going to have a stone button right there, and that'll finish off the top surface of the fairing right there. Now what we can also do is drop a button off of that uh, smooth stone full block right there, then select it with world edit, and fill up all of the other gaps in here with a temporary block, then paste over like this. This will get uh, buttons in there against those top slabs just like this, and that'll kind of help with some of the mechanical detailing on the inside that is exposed when the uh, speed brakes extend. So this is all the actuators and stuff on the inside that help with the extension mechanism. And the last thing we can do to clean this up here is grab a smooth stone full block right here and replace that double slab layer with a smooth stone full block there. We'll have to replace that birch button, make sure that you do that, and then just uh, paste it over as well, just to clean up that kind of double slab uh, level through there. So it's just the smooth stone full block. Anyways, once you have that, that is everything for the ground spoilers. So we can just do the same thing on the other side here. So again, we'll be knocking out this smooth stone full block right there, 
then uh, temporary block here, dead tube coral fan, select and replace over that stonebird top slab, like so. Quartz stair facing forwards there, with a uh, stonebird or smooth stone stair uh, off of it, just like this. Then, with the um, smooth stone slabs right here, we'll skip this slab, then knock out this slab, then come out at an angle, and we're knocking out three across this time. Then uh, one back right here, and this top slab and half slab layer out to the side, just like this. So you have a one, three, two kind of gap pattern in there. And again, for the uh, spoilers in here, first we can replace this with the smooth stone, as I said, uh, like this, just to get rid of that double slab layer. For the inboard, uh, well, not the inboard, but for the flight spoilers section here, uh, half slab out, and then a layer of two right here, just like that. Then the rest here will be with the uh, vertical slabs for the ground spoilers. So, barrier right there, dead tube coral fan off of it. This time a barrier coming off at an angle from that uh, block right there, and we can actually get that with the smooth stone full block as well right there. Did I get that on the other side? I don't think I did. Oh, no I didn't because that's a stair in its place, never mind. Yeah, so we'll want a mossy stone brick stair right there, uh, if I can get it. There we go. And that'll finish off the angling for the, um, uh, the flat track fairing here, that's the word. Okay. And then a jungle trapdoor on top of the jungle trapdoor below. Now that we have that, we can place that dead tube coral fan there, and then just close that jungle trapdoor, leaving that one there, and then close one against his face, just like this. Then to finish off the detailing here, stone button on top of that middle flap track fairing, then stone button there, select that, drop any old block in between those three gaps right there where we have space to work with, and paste over just like this, and making sure to uh, close back up that trapdoor if it opened. And with that, that's the ground spoilers done. Alright, so for the reverse thrust on the CFM56 engines here, the first thing we're going to do is corner off this uh, stair facing out to the side right here, so it exposes that left uh, notch in the stair right there. For this, stair facing out to the side and a stair facing forwards on its rear face like this. Select the corner stair and paste like so. So that'll expose this little bit on, in there. Uh, so basically how the thrust reverses on the CFM engines work is, for, on the 737 at least, is this whole section at the back slides backwards here for the uh, thrust reverser outlets. So, um, unfortunately we can only really do this on the top portion right there because we don't really have quarter blocks to work with. Since this is all um, slab layers here, we can't exactly uh, slide the whole thing back a half block, but this is the kind of the closest approximation I can get to that in this scale. So, uh, and then in order to actually have the black portion showing because, you know, the engine interior is black, what we're going to be doing for this is knocking out this stair out to the side right here then placing a stripped oak log on the, uh, facing horizontally like this. In the Aerotine pack, this is a half wool, half black wool texture. Now, um, it's important to note that, um, this isn't fully directional. This texture only rotates on a three-axis basis, so it can't rotate the other way around. If you are building this in an orientation where, um, you can't get it on the forward half of this block, and as well, in the version 2 of the Aerotame pack here, one of the axes is assigned to, actually, this one. It's an upside-down variant of this half-black, half-white texture instead of a sideways variant. So if you're building it directionally, you know, in a different direction than this, you probably won't be able to have this. If you can, that's great. You can leave it like this. It doesn't matter that it's knocking out the uh, sideways stair shaping of the engine on the inside here because you can't really see it from this angle when it's on the ground, but uh, yeah, if you don't have the air team pack or you can't get it in this orientation exactly, you can probably get away with just a solid black wool like this. It's a bit more of an eyesore, but uh, it works if you need it. Otherwise, if you can, getting this black wool texture only on the forward half here for, well, you know, the thrust reverser that's half a block wide, that does do the job much more nicely while also exposing it on the other side here. Oh, that stair got updated. So we'll need to make sure to paste over that corner stair again. So you'll see it exposes that little notch there in the uh, uh, black hole section for the kind of a hint at what would be the thrust reversers. So that's kind of the best I could do with this scale, but uh, definitely gets the job done. So we're just going to do the same thing on the other side here. So I'm going to do the uh, 
stripped out the Lord first here, so I don't have to update that stair. So on the forward half there, then round the stair off like so. And that will give you the thrust reversers. So now the aircraft is decelerating on the runway. Anyways, once you have that, that's the last of the configurations for the 737 here. And we are done. So congratulations on completing the 737 next generation. Thank you so much for choosing an aero team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of whatever project you're using this for. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like, given that you of course provide proper credit to the aero team for these designs. So, if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. Tag us on Twitter, or share it with us on our Discord server. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the Airteam channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.